welcome back to another episode of Junk Vlogs, where I answer your questions submitted in the comments. So please leave a comment, and I'm going to go over some questions that I've gotten throughout the week. I'm getting quite a few, so um, uh, I may not always get to everyone's, but I'll answer generally in one form or the other. Some of them I just like to do in video form. It's a lot easier, and it gets to feature you guys out there, my viewers, a little bit. <laughs> So we'll uh, start off with uh, this first one. It's not really a question, just a, a nice comment I thought I'd read. I get ones like this all the time, but I still mostly get questions. It's from the FLB Club. Nice video, chock full of good info. Uh, you've obviously extremely knowledgeable about this stuff. Good carb info too. Well, I thank you. I mean, that's why I, why I've done this, why I started it up. Because there's a lot of people out there that, um, you know, you just do an internet search on something that you're having troubles with, and you're going to get a lot of results. Well, uh, I like to engage with my viewers and try to give uh, some information that's tailored to their exact situation and stuff that can help anybody else that might be uh, watching. All right, the next one is from uh, Mo Moses uh, Avalos. I'm sure how that username is pronounced. Uh, I have a 1980 Yamaha DT175. I have one of those too. It's in really rough condition. Maybe you'll see it in a series someday. Uh, I was wondering if the tires I have on it is good for the street or if putting Supermoto tires would be best since I plan on riding the street more than the dirt. Okay, since you uh, submitted this through YouTube, I don't have a picture, so I don't know what tires you have on there, but let's assume that they're the original tires. The original tires on that bike would have been more of a universal trials tread. Uh, back then, they wouldn't have been the nice soft compounds that we have today, but they're just a square block tread. Good use of universal tread pattern. It's cheap for the manufacturers to put on here. Um, if it's the original tires, then uh, no, no. Just from an age, weather checking, safety standpoint, don't run on those tires. I mean, you can run on them uh, you just, you know, when you're getting the bike running, tuned up a little like that. But, you know, if you're going to seriously ride this thing, you got to put on different tires. So that <clears throat> comes to the next question. Well, what should you put on? Say you do more street than dirt. Well, you need to really evaluate what that means. If you're pretty much purely street, you're only going to be going on, say, like gravel roads or, or something that's a reasonably maintained uh, dirt road. Yeah, super, uh, a supermodal style tire, more street oriented, strictly street oriented tire. It's going to be uh, probably your best bet there. You're just going to have to be mindful of when you get on the dirt, those tires are going to feel really slippery, but uh, it's not that you can't manage them. Otherwise, you can go to kind of a dual sport tire, which they make ones that are that lean either way, more dirt to street or more street to dirt. And what you're going to want to look is like an 80-20, you know, 80% street, 20% dual sport tire. Um, there's a lot out there, and I can't remember exactly what sizes uh, your rims are, and that limits your tire choices to a certain extent in that in all segments, whether it be street, strictly street or strictly dirt. So that's my recommendation there, is you got to get new tires on that bike. Um, next one, uh, Moe Star says, I, Hi, I have a 125cc TDR cheap Chinese bike, and every time I ride it and change gears, it bogs down when I give it throttle. Can you please help me ASAP? Thanks. Um, a lot, of, a lot of things that could be that. I've gone over some of that. Um, the reason it's bogging is more likely uh, your mixture is too, too lean for some reason. Um, and that can be a host of reasons. Either it's just jetted poorly from the factory, um, there's debris or old manufacturing, uh, swarf as they call it from the tank when they injection molded it and then machined off for the cap got in there, now that's stuck in the uh, fuel shutoff valve, or maybe it's made it all the way in the carburetor. So, and that, that will starve it for fuel. Um, also, could be just dirty fuel, clean your carburetor. So, uh, there's not enough information for me to tell you exactly what you should do here, but uh, you're running lean for some 
reason. Uh, so start there. Uh, next one up. Um, hey, Junkman. Thur thoroughly enjoyed your postings on modifying the Bighorn. Thank you. That's part of my Barn Fresh series, so if you want to go check that out, that'd be great. After selling my Bighorn many years ago, I recently acquired another one. I've spent some time and research modifying it as wondering if you could shed some light on the results. My mods include single plug head, proper squish band install, uh, and, and clearance to piston, uh, cleaned up the exhaust and tran exhaust transfer ports, um, rotary port of the rotary valve cover, intake to crankcase, cut rotary valve disc, per the speed kit, kit specs, which I have a link to all that on the website as well. Uh, period correct, or period bell wigris, uh, up pipe, wise go piston and rings, uh, one pound lighter flywheel. After trying the bike, it ran, and in my opinion, had, had a very mellow feel, strong bottom and mid range, but nearly no over red rev. Really wasn't a great hit either. Any suggestions? Could this be ignition timing? Should I raise the exhaust port? Uh, jetting is fairly close to stock and bike seems to pull clean. Thanks for the hours of entertainment on your write-ups. Any help would be appreciated. Okay, well you got a good good thing going that you've already done almost everything. Um, I'll just say in general, by nature the rotary valve engine uh, is not going to be uh, a high rever anyways or you're it's it's primarily designed around low low to mid range uh, you know kind of to give that two stroke a stump pulling torque versus uh, a piston cord or a reed valve um, machine of, of the similar area era so that's just something inherent to the engine design uh, yes, you could raise the exhaust port. Uh, that's in the speed kit spec, so you could you could do that or have that done. That's going to help a little bit. Um, you know, you can also lighten the flywheel more or get the F81M button mag, they call it. Those are hard to find, but I guess they're out there. I've heard. I don't have one, but um, that would lighten the flywheel even more. And that'll help you get some more uh, top end rev, but you're going to lose a little bit of uh, tractable uh, power down low with that just because you don't have that inertia from the flywheel there if you go in and lighter. Um, yeah, man, you got got almost everything going here. Uh, timing, you said. Well, Speed Kit says leave the timing alone. However, I've heard you can advance it just like a millimeter or so. That might help, but uh, with the over rev, but you'll sacrifice something on the low end, especially idle quality, and uh, and it could uh, could detonate even though you you've had the proper head work done, which helps a lot. Uh, when it does get hot. So, yeah, th there's not a good way other than really lightening up that crankshaft, but like I said, it's a give and a take. Um, but raising the exhaust port would help, help some. Also, uh, like I said, the uh, light, going to even lighter flywheel, but by nature, the engine design, you, you know, you're not going to get get that uh, real top end like a, a more traditional two-stroke uh, hit as well. That's the thing. The rotary valve, because you are able to control that uh, intake timing and, and close, totally close off the crankcase versus other two-stroke designs, um, that takes away the hit. And, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of wanting to take away the hit because that makes the bike easier to ride. Easier to ride, you know, more manageable power, uh, the faster you can go. Because if you have a hit, like let's say, you know, the, for example, a YZ490 is, is known for a very, very narrow power band. If you can stay within that, the bike's great. Anything outside of that, it runs terrible and you're just slowing down. And, the, and without extensive modifications to kind of adjust some things, that bike is really difficult to ride quickly. Whereas the rotary valve engine with that nice mellow power band, uh, especially how you've modified it, makes the bike really easy to ride. So that's the rest of the questions I have for this video. So if you have a question or just want to know a little bit more about me or, or my channel or something, 
Uh, leave a comment below, like this video, subscribe, share it around, and let's put a keyword in here. So I know you made it to the end of this probably kind of long video. Um, I'm out here uh, in the flatlands on I-76 at the moment, so let's put I-76, and then I'll know you got uh, to the end of this video. And thanks for watching.